Hello and welcome to Bits Box World, builds made easy. So I've played a lot of games in the past like Warhammer Quest or maybe Dungeons and Dragons where you have uh, sort of game boards that you put together to put your models on and it just made me think I want to have a go at making a sort of ruined floor that could be used either as scatter scenery on my battlefields or uh, in Warhammer Quest or Dungeons and Dragons, something like that. So I've got this old foam board that I had lying around and uh, my trusted piece of cardboard from a cereal packet, Weetabix or something like that. And um, I wanted to try and make stone slabs. So I'm going to cut up the cardboards and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it the thickness of my ruler so I can have nice straight lines and uh, then I can make them into squares so I can start to lay a sort of slab foundation but a ruined floor for this build. I imagine my warriors going onto the battlefield and just finding this ruin. Uh, maybe a sort of city landscape even as well. You could use it for a sci-fi or futuristic scenario so I could use it in both Warhammer or Warhammer 40,000 or Kill Team and I wanted it to be a flat board as well so I could play scatter scenery on it so I could adapt to whatever game I was playing. So once we've squared everything up just gonna cut these out into nice long strips. The great thing about this build is you should be able to do this at home because everyone will have a cereal packet, I would hope. And uh, all you need is a bit of a board for a foundation. I've used, as I say, foam boards because I had it lying around, but you could use a bit of wood or even thicker cardboard. So I stack the strips up so I can cu cut them nice and quickly. So I've got them in stacks of about four, I think. So when you cut them, you can get lots of your slabs cut out and ready all in one quick go. There we go. All the slabs are cut out. And um, I don't want them to look perfect, so I'm going to just bend them a little bit. And what that does is it gives them a bit of a cracked look as well so when you come to paint them later it really gives the paint something to hold on to when you're doing your highlighting if you wanted to go to a further extent you could cut these up a little bit within their own tile so it's like they've been cracked completely open but as I'm using cereal packet cardboard it's not that thick so I found with bending them you get the cracked look without having to make lots of cuts. So with a bit of PVA glue, just gonna apply that to my board and then get sticking, get some tiles stuck down in a way that looks like it's a old abandoned building, maybe a church or something like that, just being discovered on the battlefield and uh, my warriors are gonna be having the fight over it. So as I stick down the rest of these tiles, let me know in the comments below what you've been building of late. Have any of my videos been helpful with your own scenery building? And uh, has it inspired you to crack out any of your old models? I was thinking about Warhammer Quest when making this build. Such a great game that I used to play and I love it so much. Really accessible for newcomers to miniature war gaming. What a great game that was. I used to uh, like the elf myself. That's what I tend to go with with my armies is uh, I like to be uh, of the Eldar type, the elves. Oh, I've always had an affinity with them, those pointy eared guys, but uh, I look very much like a dwarf myself. So um, uh, I might try going for dwarves in the future. So once those stone slabs have been glued down, I'm going to give the rest of the board a bit of texture. So uh, I'm gonna paint some PVA glue in all of those gaps 
that I have left. And uh, what you'll notice as well, just to give it that sort of broken down, dilapidated effect, I've let some tiles go missing. Maybe they were taken to go and build somebody's house. Or uh, I've also put some at an uh, angle as well. And then once you've put your PVA glue over the entirety of the board, just scatter over some mixture of sand. I've got sharp sand and fine kiln dried sand as well, just to give it some varying texture across the board. Usually with my boards as well and my bases that I make, I do texture the very edges of the board. But with this one, I didn't feel like I needed to because the sloping edge that I've made on that foam board, it, it made quite a nice textured effect anyway. So a bit of paint, bit of water. Don't worry if it goes onto your build. We want this paint to be a bit thinned down so I can just use that water there and thin it down as I go. And uh, I'm gonna paint this all black as my base coat to start off with. And then it gives you the foundation, hides any of the color of the board or the cardboard tiles and the sand. And you can start working on your colors moving up. I'm gonna go for three highlights on this and it's gonna be in gray as well. So this could be either a city board or it could be a fantasy board. So it's very versatile to be used in whatever miniature models I am having a war game with. So varying degree of grays, starting off with the darker gray, get rid of a lot of that paint that's on the paintbrush because we're just gonna be doing a dry brush over the board. It is gonna be quite a heavy dry brush, so a lot of that paint is going to take because we want that to be almost the foundation of what we do over the black. So paint it all up. And then you can move on to your next highlight. So just going up on the greys. This is gonna be a lighter dry brush than the one I started off with because you just wanna to start to grab the raised edges as you go and uh, start to fill in any of those gaps, any of those flatter edges might be a bit more gray than the dark gray that we started off with. I've really enjoyed recently getting back into my board building, my scenery building. It's something that I love doing and it really just helps to get away from the chaos of life. Um, there's nothing better than putting something together, coming up with an idea and having a go. And that's what I hope to do with this channel is inspire people just to give it a go. and. Uh, see how you can make things cheaply and easily from just everyday objects. With this as well, that I am gonna go one more highlight up. I know I said three, but I thought it needed just a little bit more, some white on the edges, and that would just really pick out those raised bits on the tiles and really just, I think it, it gives it a really good effect, makes them look really cool. So this could be all you need to do. It's a nice, it's a nice board that can be used across mul multiple different platforms of miniature armies that you're using. But I'm going to give it a bit more character. So using a bit of brown, I'm gonna go over all the dirt areas with two shades of this brown. A darker brown, just to make it look a bit more earthy and then also a lighter brown. Mix the, the white and the brown together just to make that lighter brown. And then go over all of those earth areas as well. And it just gives it a nice, in my view, a nice look against the gray and really makes them work together. You can go over the edges where the tiles are as well, like the earth is coming up through those broken cracked tiles 
and I think it really does start to give this board a bit more character. So that could be it, that could be ready to go. But I'm gonna do one final thing. Now this is the bit that would cost a bit of money, so you don't need to do this step. But uh, I bought some static grass, sort of a orangey, yellowy, dead grass kind of static grass. And I thought that would look really good on a ruin. And I've not used it yet. So I had to figure out how to use these without one of those fancy adapters that makes your sta static grass stand up on end and this is what i've learned bit of pva glue you want to make it fairly thick so you've got a, a nice thick drop on there and then with your static grass if you just grab just a real small pinch you can start to make tufts of this burnt grass this dying grass by just making a pinch and then placing them into that pva glue and it makes a nice little tuft of grass as i say you want to do quite a, a fairly thick drop pinch the static grass pull off any of the longer bits and then just stand it up in that pva glue And then I'm just going to place this over varying parts of the board just as I feel fit to give it a bit of colour, a bit of character. Let me know if you've made tufts before, how, how did you go about doing that? I, I don't think mine look too bad uh, when you've blown off the excess. They actually look quite good, like they're just these little tufts coming through the crackage of the floor there like they're reaching up trying to hold on to a bit of life and i think if you start to add a bit of scatter scenery it really comes into its own so these are some of my homemade walkways that i've made uh, you can check out that video if you like but there we go that is my board build let me know what you thought about this in the comments below and is this something that you're going to have a go with I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Bits Bots World Builds Made Easy.